in the name of Allah, the most beneficent, the most merciful. Assalamu alaikum and welcome to weekly roundup. In this program, we will be discussing important political, economic and social affairs which have happened domestically as well as globally in the light of sermon of Ustad Motram Sayyid Chwan Nikwi. As always, Mr. Ali is with us. Assalamu alaikum Mr. Ali, how are you? Wa alaikum assalam, Fahim, I am going good and hopefully the viewers will be doing good too and everyone is doing fine during this pandemic and we pray for all of all our viewers and the friends who are sick so Allah gives them health as soon as possible Yes, inshallah. there has been surge in pandemic cases yeah, throughout the Pakistan yep. Yep. amid this fourth pandemic wave Yep, so hopefully with this immunization and also yes. uh, like all this, if we are taking all the precautions and stuff, hopefully things will improve. We can only pray and wait for time to improve. Well, moving towards the program, first of all, we have to dis discuss domestic affairs. And uh, as we know that in Afghanistan, Taliban have formed their interim government. And the effects of Talibanization in Afghanistan are also evident in Pakistan, as it was predicted by the analysts that uh, the terrorist cells and according to DJSPR, he called them sleeping cells of uh, terrorists will be galvanized by this Taliban takeover in Afghanistan and they have been galvanized. So there has been such in terrorist activities in Pakistan and uh, unfortunately uh, there has been attack on the military forces in southern Afghanistan which is added in martyrdom of seven uh, soldiers of Pakistan army and five of the terrorist groups five members of terrorist group have also been killed and uh, basically in Taliban uh, Taliban faction in Pakistan which is known as TTP or Tariqe Taliban Pakistan it has been fought by fa various terrorist groups which include Lashkar Jangvi and Sipai Saba Pakistan yep. so now these terrorist groups are galvanized and they are attacking uh, military constantly uh, since the takeover of Taliban and even two to three months before it since the US has announced that they will be pulling out its troop from the Afghanistan yeah. and similarly other banned terrorist organizations like uh, different banned organizations like Lashkar -e Jangvi and their active persons are also very uh, active nowadays and they have been doing conferences and video yeah. conferences in which they are constantly spreading sectarian violence and hatred and yeah. so they basically want to destroy and dismantle the uh, present law and order situation in Pakistan. Yeah, actually, the fact is that these banned organizations we are talking about, they are banned on paper, but in real, when we see they are operating openly, and some of them are actually, as we discussed in the previous program, are present in as advisors for our, of our chief minister in Punjab of Punjab, and they are allowed to participate in the elections, they are allowed to uh, do all the, all the activities what a uh, normal citizen is allowed to do. So actually if the government really wants to uh, do a serious stuff with these terrorists, they need to ban, uh, they need to actually practically ban them. And they did, uh, the government did a really good job in the 10 days of Muharram, at the start of the Muharram, Muharram overall went really peaceful except a couple of incidents throughout the country but this time around when they, they when there are plans by these terrorists after the uh, uh, government takeover by Taliban as well as uh, they, their morale is high and they plan to cause violence at the time of Arbain but it doesn't look like there is any such planning uh, on the part of the government so Mominin also uh, need to be really vigilant and government also needs to or do some special arrangements. Yes, basically if we talk about the Arbain yep. and if we compare it with Ashura, yep. normally the security situation during the Ashura uh, is good and government yep. and city administrations and different district administrations, yep. they are very vigilant and uh, especially during this contemporary Muharram, it was yep. the security and law and order situation was very good. But normally during the Arbain processions, as it has now started to develop during the last few years, yeah. but the security situation is not that uh, satisfactory as it has been during the Muharram processions yeah. and Majalis and the possible 
uh, threat to these urbane yep. uh, possessions and majalis can be from the terrorist factions who have uh, expressed explicitly on uh, yep. social media as well as on other forms of media yep. that they want to stop these possessions and they want to stop these majalis yep. of Imam Hussain al yep. Islam. In the, in the media, uh, on the media, and another report has come that around 650 billion rupees business has been done during the 10 days of Muharram, which is uh, which is a really good performance of Pakistan economy, much better than what it has performed during the last three years, government of PTI. So actually, uh, and uh, unfortunately, out of that 650 billion, half of it has gone to the professional speakers. Yes, they which are, are charging the commercial high speakers. Amount, like uh, a normal, um, an average speaker, professional speaker, he has earned more than like 10, uh, more than like nearly 10 million. And uh, it, is, it is a sort of business which doesn't need any sort of investment or whatsoever. Yes. And they are, uh, and all the businessmen, farmers, even the tradesmen, they are surprised to see this sort of earning. And some of them have actually left their actual professions, have come, come to this, uh, this professional uh, this professionalism sort of thing. And unfortunately, Azadari has been commercialized in our country. And what we see, the result of it is that specific personalities, they are doing some specific activities and they are trying to use Azadari as for their personal political purposes. Yes, and there also has been the political intrusion. Yeah. In yeah. Azadari also, yeah, that's and right. it has also been commercialized. Yep. So these are basically two main threats to the right. possessions yep. and Azadari. Yep. Yep. One is commercialism, and other is uh, uh, political politi uh, politicalization of the yep. Azadari. And yep. another threat to the Azadari is basically from these uh, Nasbis and from these terrorist factions yep. who want yep. to turn this chapter and this topic of Azadari and Imam Hussain al-Islam as sectarian topic. Although yep. Imam Hussain al-Islam belongs to the whole Ummati Muslima, he is not only, Imam Hussain al-Islam is not only leader of Shias, rather he is the leader of whole Muslim yep. world and you can say that he is the leader of liberty and freedom for the whole humanity. And Jamia Urwatul Wuska has done a fantastic job especially during these 10 days of Muharram, as viewers would have seen that on every day, every day of Majlis of Ashura, the ten, for the 10 days, renowned Sunni speakers, they came here and gave really fantastic sort of addresses. And they, they uh, expressed their, uh, their, their love to Imam Hussain al in a fantastic way. And this is, this is the sort of courage and this is the sort of atmosphere we need uh, what Azadars need to create and wherever these sectarian guys or uh, these sectarian minded people or business minded people, they are selling their hatred, just the silent people, the silent majority, which is unfortunately more than 95% Sunnis and Shi, as we know, they are not sectarian minded, they are not terrorists, they are not professional uh, they are not uh, using Azadari or Islam for yes, their professional uh, uh, sort of intention. Yes, this Azadari has been hijacked by these yeah. commercial yeah. as well as political personalities yeah. who want to use these possessions of Azadari yeah. for their own political purpose. Yeah. And uh, they mostly constitute less than 2% yeah, or you right. can say that uh, 5%. Yeah. And the remaining 95%, unfortunately, they remain silent on the act of these commercial and politi yeah, uh, politicians. And uh, they can... And uh, they get exploited sometimes yes. too, you know, because when when these five percent they are creating such sort of hatred sort of environment, the general public just runs with the flow. So uh, and uh, some of them remain quiet who ha have got actually the understanding that what is going on. But these silent people have to break their silence, and they don't have to do any protests or come on the streets or anything to do that. Only and only on social media, if you can do that, that if a person is selling hatred, just put 100 or 200 comments on it, condemning that speaker and telling him that this is not the right uh, teaching of Islam and you shouldn't do it. Then this this person who is actually using Islam or Azadari as trade will have to stop it and he won't be able to do it next time. Yes, the uh, general public has this power that uh, basically they can curb and halt this yep. uh, uh, commercial as well as political 
intrusion which yeah. have happened unfortunately yeah. in Radhari yeah. by using the platform of uh, social media and yeah. if they use this platform positively they just condemn those uh, speakers who are commercial as well as they want to turn Radhari into political. And Nahyan and Mulkar is the yes. need of the time and also th these request to our Sunni brothers too that these terrorists or extremists who are trying to create rift between different sects of Muslims, please c come, come forward and uh, just uh, tell them that you are not one of us and Nasbis are not the part of Islam. So, this yes, need, same this is the, the case with the Ghalis. That's true, because Ghalis are even worse than yes, worse Qadianis than. and the other, because uh, as Ustad Mathur mentioned that Qadianis, they were declared as Kafir because they didn't believe uh, on uh, uh, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam being the last prophet. But these Ghalis, their, uh, their ideology is even worse. They are calling Ayma Alayhi Salam and especially Mawla Ali Alayhi Salam as Allah. So, I mean, uh, they, they shouldn't be acceptable. And the ulama yes, and the people who have got some soft feeling for them, they should really think about it because this is actually uh, giving bad name to whole mazhab So, yes, they should the be isolated Yes, the only too. solution to this problem, uh, this sectarian problem, which uh, these people's few of the factions in the society, yeah. mostly terrorists are trying to, uh, they want to spread hatred as well as sectarian violence throughout yep. the country. They can be curbed by using social platform of social media and similarly if religious clerics yep. uh, they play positive role from the both sides from the Shias as well as from the Sunnis yep. that uh, they must uh, differentiate between al Sunnat and uh, Nasbis as yep. well as Shias should also differentiate between the actual Shias as well as between the Khalis. Yep. So this problem can be solved very easily. And while play in their hands obviously. Yes. Well, well, further moving on, uh, interesting news is that the Prime Minister of Pakistan, uh, Mr. Khan, has been interviewed by the American-based yep. TV channel CNN. Yep. And as we know that Prime Minister is mostly very explicit during his interviews yep. and as he come, mostly comes into the interview without any preparation. So, yep. he has basically called the Haqqani faction of uh, Taliban as the tribe in Afghanistan. Yep. And he's, uh, he's normally really overconfident most yes. of the time. He, once he called Uzbek, uh, when he went to Uzbekistan, he said that I know Uzbekistan more than Uzbeks. And uh, he has also said at one instance that I know Europe more than European. He has also so said that Germany and Japan are basically neighbors. Yeah, th that he, can, he can say anything, you know. Yes. But uh, the fact is that actually, I mean, in this, this in interview is really interesting. And as we know, as you said, that our politicians, they are fond of giving uh, interviews, especially to the international media outlets like CNN or BBC, although they are, uh, although they are being run by Zonists. But uh, our politicians feel proud about it when they are giving interviews to them. And to, the, to our state media, they are not interested to give interviews or something. And in this, this interview, he, uh, although, as you mentioned, that uh, although uh, Hakani uh, group, as he said, that it's it's a Pashto tribe. tribe, Pashto tribe, and uh, it's uh, actually uh, it it is a power. Uh, he he actually was t uh, trying to correct the American public, and he yes. he he told them that Americans have got no idea whatsoever about what Hakani group is, because you guys are always talking about a Hakani group that Pakistan is supporting them and. Actually, Hakani uh, Hakani group uh, is a sort of Pashto tribe, and it's uh, and so and so he th said things about them. But although it's uh, the ha the yes, Islamic seminary in a Koda yeah, Khattak, yeah, Darul Alum yeah, Alum Hakani, and Hakani, the graduates yeah. of those yeah. this Islamic seminary mostly are called Hakani's, like yeah, those studying in. Right. Uh, Banori are called Banori, and those in studying yeah. in Jamia Sharfi are called Sharfi. So. I mean, our Prime Minister really needs but to he has, uh, clarify things also before talking. Uh, talked about some very good things during his interview. Yeah. He has said that the basis of our relationship with America since the inception of Pakistan yeah. is wrong. And yeah. he said that when Pakistan are basically doing 
the engagements of Pakistan and US, if we talk about the history of these engagements, there have been four engagements of Pakistan yeah. with the United States of America. And the first engagement was during the era of Liaquat Ali Khan, Prime Minister Liaquat Ali Khan, when he chose us to visit United States of America instead of Soviet Union during the era of I think, yeah. yes, during the era of Cold War. Yeah. And uh, Prime Minister has said that the basis of our relationship with America is strong from the start because yeah. America don't consider us a country. Yeah. Uh, rather, they just consider us a warrior faction who can yeah. fight for the sake of money. And uh, he he's right in that way actually. And uh, the when when we come l see later in the history that these things continue and at the time of uh, General Ayub Khan, Ayub, he, he was one of the strongest uh, rulers of pa in Pakistan history. He also continued the same legacy and we continued to be uh, the slaves of United States and Ziaul Haq also did yes, the same. Yes, the worst was during the era of Ziaul Haq when yep. uh, uh, Pakistan was indulged into the war. Yep, we will we'll talk about it yes, later, later or discuss about it later. And Musharraf, Musharraf is even, I mean, somewhat yes. the same as Zia because he he sold Pakistanis just without anything. I mean, uh, although uh, it is it is said in media that uh, in, at the time of Nawaz Sharif he sold Emil Khansi to U.S. for five thousand dollars, but in the time of Musharraf, Pakistanis were being sold for nothing. And yes, they were uh, taking name American of one person, and uh, he was uh, giving like eight thousand persons with the same name without any money. So basically at that time when the yep. Pakistan was asked to uh, have an alliance with America yep. uh, on the war of terrorism during the Musharraf era yep. and uh, Musharraf was basically told yeah. to yeah. come yeah. with the America, yeah. to have an alliance with the America and yeah. he agreed on the yeah. phone and call. Uh, actually, uh, uh, it was on, it was not even the head of the state, it was Secretary of, Secretary yes, of the Secretary State, of Colin the state. Paul. He, he made a three minutes phone call and he was even surprised. He writes later in his, uh, one of his uh, uh, like, uh, books that actually he was surprised to see the head of state of Pakistan, who is a commando, to yes, give SOC everything commando. only in, in three minutes interview. And uh, he, uh, he, he... And Musharraf didn't even consult his yeah. core commanders, his yeah, cabinet right. and yeah. Yeah, no because, one else. Yeah, because he, he was also an call. overconfident guy and he... he he used to think that I know everything and I, I can yes. do whatever I like. And, but unfortunately, so, he did that. And Imran Khan said in this interview that if I would have been at Musharraf's place, I wouldn't have allowed U.S. to attack uh, uh, Afghanistan or I wouldn't have helped U.S. to um, attack Afghanistan because he, he, in this interview, he said that um, being ally of United States, Pakistan has lost more uh, has has faced more lo loss than what we have faced uh, in the wars, wars with against India. India. Yes, and Pakistan have fought uh, four wars with India. Yep. On, in 1948, 1965, yep. 1984, and yeah, Kargil right. War. Yep. But they lost Pakistan when they have they were allies with the yep. America. Yep. It has been much more as compared to the wars which they have fought yep. with India. Yeah. And Prime Minister has also said that if America wants to have relation with Pakistan, it yeah. should be same as the America have the relations with the South Asian giant like India. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, uh, although we know that the uh, people present in Prime Minister's cabinet, they are really f f uh, they are really big fans of Imran Khan, but they they won't comment on uh, any of his. Uh, any of his like uh, statements, like uh, when he used uh, when he said that about Urdu, that English is actually the reason why we are in inferiority complex and we are declining. Our nation is declining due to English, but no one said anything about it. Our president, who is doing normally, who did uh, recently a big holu in uh, for Ima, uh, for Mr. Imran Khan, that when he when he said that the whole world they need to do bad of Imran Khan because he's he's got such a, a great wisdom and he's yes, such a great, great leader PN. but uh, he he would never even come uh, even he won't be, uh, come in front and comment on this statement because normally if uh, the head uh, head of states uh, actually or or the head of the government they would have given some statements which Imran Khan has given 
which is uh, which really don't favor establishment establishment would have uh, like asked uh, took him uh, took that really yes establishment badly, would have ousted that government yeah, but not but in he, that but he's case. got good relations with the establishment so yes he's and here that. also as we know that since the joe biden and america came into power yeah uh, he has contacted every leader in the asia especially in the south uh, asia because as yeah. america was pulling out its troop but uh, yeah this topic is very hot in the media that he has not even contacted the prime minister of pakistan yeah. so when the prime minister of pakistan was asked why joe biden has a not contacted you yeah he has said that joe biden is basically a busy man so yeah. he has yeah. no time to contact yeah well, th this is this is actually uh, a sort of stress being created by pakistani media and every pakistani including our prime minister they are really stressed why joe biden hasn't called us i mean we should be glad that they haven't uh, he has he has not contacted us and he hasn't uh, given us a new dictation or something and uh, as Reverend Mohsam said that uh, t told uh, when he was talking to the uh, going government of uh, President Rouhani. He, he when he uh, was spoken to them, he declared them that uh, he declared them a failed government. And the reason he pointed out was because they didn't follow the directions of. Uh, Reverend Mohsam that don't trust Europe and U.S. Yes, especially and U.S. Especially U.S. and to the new government he he said that actually when you are negotiating with us don't think that you are talking to a human yes it it's a beast or it's a wolf yes so when you're talking to them just talk to them in with this mentality so what 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 actually we expect from us they have attacked yes, us if uh, yeah as Prime Minister has also said during his interview that when Pakistan was ally of America yep. in the war on terrorism, America has attacked Pakistan with drones. Yeah, for, for more than times. four hundred times. Four hundred times. Yep. And uh, th this shows actually, I mean, what's the benefit of being friend of America? Yes, and as Pakistan was ally of America and yep. during these drone attacks, the sovereignty and the integrity of Pakistan was yep. was uh, dismantled and. Uh, so it was sort of embarrassment for the Pakistan that the own citizens of Pakistan were attacked with the drones yep. from the left of Pakistan. Yep. So, but uh, as uh, the one good thing about that interview was that Prime Minister has expressed explicitly that all the the basis of relation of Pakistan with United States of America was wrong from the beginning, yep. and uh, the the most of the difficulties of Pakistan having alliance with America is due to. America and 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 uh, he uh, when he was asked by the interviewer that on what conditions you are going to help U.S. to keep control in Afghanistan or uh, to become ally of U.S. he said under no conditions because yes. I am not going to let my country fight the war of others and destroy our own country. Yes, Prime Minister yes. has also given a statement about Afghanistan, the yep. recent situation in Afghanistan. Yeah. Uh, the war ravaged country. The Prime Minister has said that uh, he doesn't know that whether this government will run or not. But uh, yeah. one thing is very clear that uh, Afghanistan is on the brink of humanitarian crisis. Yeah. And uh, if this government fails, then there will be a much yeah. bigger humanitarian crisis yeah. in the Afghanistan. So the world has to accept this yeah, he Afghan government. Yeah, the international community to accept the government of Taliban. Yes. And so basically, who are Taliban and what is their history? Uh, we'll be discussing about this after the break. Now we are going to the short, take the short break, and after the break we'll be discussing about the history of Taliban, who are Taliban and who are Mujahideen, how these Taliban have formed, and how they have taken control of Afghanistan in 1996, and how their government was stopped. And later on, now how Taliban have once again come into power in Afghanistan. So we'll be discussing all this after the break. So keep in touch with us.